Today, we are joined by Lily Tang Williams, who grew up in China and experienced firsthand Mao's Cultural Revolution. She is now running for representative of New Hampshire's Congressional District 2, and is currently the only major Republican candidate running against current representative Annie Custer. Mrs. Williams, thank you for being with us today. To start off, could you just introduce yourself and tell us about your childhood and your background in China? I I was born um, two years before Mao's Cultural Revolution um, in Chengdu, Sichuan province. Uh, when he died, I was 12. So that was uh, the beginning of my awakening process. Uh, because I was so indoctrinated, I thought he was a godlike leader. And I went to law school to study uh, in Shanghai and trying to search for truth when I was 17. And uh, in law school, and later I become a law school faculty member, and I I just could not um, uh, like continue to support one party dictatorship. So I was looking for my um, promised land, which is America. Mm -hmm. And somebody told me about America when I was a junior in college and the Declaration of Independence, the U.S. Constitution. And uh, I just thought, oh, this is a country I want to come to if I have to you know, escape China someday to search for new life and, and live under freedom and the prosperity and, and, uh, and to have opportunity to succeed. So yesterday I just celebrated my 36th anniversary to arrive America. And, and uh, when I was uh, almost 24 and could not speak English well and had $100 in my pocket to borrow from friends, uh, was in debt to my American sponsor, like $1,200. So I started in a hole in this country and I'm running for U.S. Uh, and Congress uh, uh, now in New Hampshire, second congressional district. You know, my my story is uh, embodiment of the American dream that America is the greatest country, exceptional country on earth. No matter where you come from, how, how little you start, what skin color you have, if you work hard and uh, you take a personal responsibility to uh, be successful and you can. So this is a, a you know, positive, very good American dream story. Yeah. So I know that a lot of your supporters really resonate with your interpretation of like the American dream. So what makes like it important to you for to share your story to the people around you? Well, the reason I'm running because I... I see America I love is going down the wrong direction for many years. I have been a grassroots mom activist since Obama, like uh, um, it's like uh, over 10 years ago. And uh, I I just feel like, you know, country is changing. And as an immigrant who grew up in a oppressive regime, I recognize it. I recognize the wrong direction. I recognize the terms and tactics and ideologies and that this country is going down with, I feel like I have to do something. I have to speak up, tell the truth, some alarm. And because I have three children who were born in this country, I'm very blessed with loving husband, three adult children, and, uh, and you know, I'm living American dream myself, but how about their American dream? I, I don't want them to uh, suffer what I suffered growing up in China. I want them to continue to live in a free country. So I think uh, people see me in New Hampshire as somebody who is total outsider. Of course, I was born in China. I mean, like I did not even become a citizen until 1994. Um, but the people resonate with me because uh, they say that, well, she grew up in communist country and she knows how horrible that is. And she will be the best, um, you know, trusted person to go to U.S. house and to um, defend America from those uh, socialist policies and radical leftist progressives that, you know, in the U.S. Congress. And uh, we want to keep America as a free country, constitutional republic, and uh, um, have a maximum individual rights and freedom that, uh, you know, given to us by our creator, by God, not by any government. 
So we swear to protect U.S. Constitution. All the politicians who got elected, but then they go to Washington, they they lose in touch, and uh, some are corrupt, and they no longer represent the people who elect them into Congress. And I think uh, that some people just see me as somebody they can relate to and they can trust. And uh, because I always tell them, I will tell you the truth, even though we might disagree on certain policies, but I will never lie to you and I will not sell out. So you said that you started to see like similarities between America now and your experience growing up in China. Could you elaborate on some like specific similarities? Well, that、uh, first of all, I was grew grassroots mom fighting against Common Core under Obama, and、uh, I feel like、uh, the centralized education in America is not the answer. I don't want the federal government deeply involved in local control of education, in parental control. Parents have rights,、uh, and that right that bond with our children. And、uh, it's natural, and nobody and should get it between them. There is this change. You think kids belong to a state, so the government wants to tell them what they should learn, how to think, and the parents are being marginalized. So I took all my kids out of the regular public schools and put them in a charter school, where I become involved and as a board member, and later got elected as chair. Then I also testified. For the first time in 2013, against gun control, I'm never a gun nut. I just thought that's my right to be there forever. But when the Democrats control the Colorado government、uh, wanted to pass all the gun control laws, I I went to testify 11 years ago. And、uh, so my AR-15 picture is pretty famous on social media. I said, you know what? I I've been slaved before. I don't want to ever be. One again, because I believe absolutely Second Amendment right for us to fight against tyranny. It's not just for us to have like a, a that to against criminals or for hunting recreation. So so and then later I noticed this indoctrination of our children in schools, not just dumb down our children, but this、uh, centralized curriculum and the push and、uh, and from the top down. Um, to indoctrinate our kids to believe in bigger and bigger government, and to believe in the socialist、uh, policies, and、uh, to even teach them anti-America agenda, because Obama said that we need to fundamentally transform America to replace it with what, you know, like figure out oh later is like he wants to to have socialist policies, and and bigger and bigger government replaced with socialism, oh. We already lived it. I don't want that here in this country. And the our kids were taught to demonize the capitalism, free market, and free enterprise, and and believe in government as like a, some kind of god. And they are so correct. We need to believe them. And even though the government are just made up from people who lots of them are hunger for power, for control, and dictate and and dominate, control our lives. I I don't want that at all. I think as an individual citizen, I have a right to get involved in politics, to challenge our politicians, to hold them accountable. So I was active for a while, and I even ran for office myself, and just to tell my stories, and and、uh, because that the years years of speaking and engagement, grassroots activism, I study American culture, political system, constitution. And the separation of power. So I've been very awake, following up. And some people said, "Oh, lots of immigrants are not political. They don't want to get involved." And but I have been always very involved because you know it doesn't matter if you like the politics or not. The politicians, the ruling class, elitists, they have interest in our lives, and they want to pass laws. To tell you, to tell you how to run your business and how to educate your kids and how what you should say and and how you think and and、uh, with all the crisis today in the world in our country, you know I feel like the country is getting worse and worse. And I'm answer my calling to say I I did not win twenty twenty two in New Hampshire for the same seat, and、uh, so I said I'm gonna run again. I'm gonna speak up and and、uh, represent myself and the people's voices. Yeah, and so do you think that America in the recent years has changed a lot from when you first came to America? Like, is it what you pictured? 
Yes, um, I I loved uh, um, when I first come to United States. That was 1988, and uh, I met my first, you know, the first day I met my husband, and then we got married and raised three wonderful children. I got laid off by corporation. I start my own business from you know nothing, and uh, you know for eight years not profitable. You know that so I just keep going and keep going, and uh, so I loved the nineties and uh, um and that. I think the country really started changing is Obama woke me up, what he said. You know, at the beginning, I thought our country would be more united who had the first black, you know, or half black president. And, and uh, that, you know, this is a great country, you know, regarding your skin color, you can become president. But, but the country was even further divided under him. And uh, um, he was not very good role model to unite the country. He was pushing those progressive socialist policies and central big size government and uh, always attack, you know, free enterprise capitalists and people who are wealthy, create jobs. And, and uh, so, and, and uh, of course, then later, um, uh, you, you know, um, when the government got bigger and uh, we had, uh, you know, Patriot Act and spy on citizens without due process, more and more gun control, expansion of the government in education and uh, um i i just feel like uh, um this is not the same constitutional republic i came here for when i first thought about america and in the past four years i'm just terrified to say how you know government becomes so increasingly authoritarian lock people down close down business and push for endless mandates control censor free speech dissenting voices. And uh, um, I, I have a personal experience. I was in Facebook jail uh, and uh, I was shadow banned and uh, feel like uh, you got a tongue cut out, you know, and you want to speak, but uh, some people are afraid to speak or you get, uh, you know, suppressed. Uh, your voice is got, uh, you know, um, suppressed by social media, big tech colluded with government to censor speech during the pandemic and during the presidential election year 2020. It, it's, I have seen all those before. So it's not, you know, the same country I thought I came to. And I have obligation, I have my calling to step up, to, to run for office and uh, to um, call out those similarities. And, and I, I want to call for people, American people focus on our common ground and uh, our, we all Americans, we all embrace American ideals something like freedom, individual liberty, free market, free enterprise, and rule of law, and meritocracy. Look, aging Americans have been discriminated. Their kids have been discriminated for years by the affirmative backing, and now still today by DEI, hiring and, and promotion, and our federal government is funding those practices in our military, and, and our judicial system is losing its independence. It's used, weaponized for politics and going after their political enemies. Those are what the communist country do in China. And so I said, uh, I said that before, I cannot be like staying on the sideline, say nothing and do nothing. So I'm calling for all the immigrants who know, who have survived, you know, what I talk about, you know, in their oppressive regime, they should join me to speak up and tell their stories. And like focusing on the Asian American community in particular, what do you think that we should focus on? Well, we are a um, pretty big minority group in our country, and lots of them have lived their American dream. We're giving opportunity to work hard to succeed. And I know some are not political, some are afraid of well, um, backslashes, you know, or their connections, you know, um, their careers and jobs. And, um, but they have seen how our American educational system, you know, turned our kids into social justice warriors. And uh, the um, aging Americans, because average income is very high per household. So we are categorized, supposed to be white, light. And, uh, and we are supposed to be well, part of a oppre oppre oppressor group. So that's a classic Marxism class struggle oppressor versus oppressed. 
And so today, Jewish Americans, Asian Americans, white Americans, they're supposed to be oppressors. And uh, so that's identity politics. And it is a Marxist, communist way to divide and conquer people. And because of that identity politics, you see Asian Americans are facing uh, lots of uh, crimes against them. And some don't know how to fight back and how to even deal with our legal system. Some don't even report when they're being attacked and robbed. And, and you have crazy California policies. So if you get robbed under $950, it's, you know, you don't have to even bother to call cops. They're too busy with other things. So it's that kind of policies incentivize criminals and actually they hurt the law-abiding citizens. And uh, they're not even talk about the aging Americans uh, uh, got reversed, discriminated because they look aging, they work hard and uh, they want to base on individual merits for their you know, like going to Ivy League colleges to get the promotions. And and uh, so I'm glad because uh, your organization with other organizations fight for years and got a Supreme Court, you know, to overturn affirmative action. That's a great thing. And thanks to everybody and all the parents and activists, uh, good work. But there's a lot more we can do as a group that we need to come out, defend America, American ideals, and we need to get involved in local politics. You see Chinese uh, um, and aging Americans got involved in San Francisco and running for local like school board and or, or their local offices. It's great. And in New York too. So you see more and more of that. I'm, I'm very happy to say that I also want to be a role model for, for immigrants who come here. Now their children grow up in this country and to be a role model for our young people get involved, to be silenced, to, to only just focus on your own life, your own business, your own career is not good enough. Politics are in your life every day. Doesn't matter you like it or not. Every law they pass affect your life because the law is a force. It's if you don't follow the law passed by politicians and then the, you will get a fine, you will get a locked up or you will you know, get a sidelined and, and uh, um, you know, like silence your voices. So we have to get active and learn how, as American citizens, we can exercise our citizens' right to free speech, free assembling, and the testify support of post bills and the grassroots organizing and uh, and and uh, get elected into local offices from bottom up as a grassroots efforts. You talk about four or five million Chinese Americans. If everybody um, can be united by uh, some classes, some research, and some you know grassroots uh, you know educational an effort to say here's how you can get involved and get involved so you can control your own town, your own city, your own schools, uh, and what they're teaching your kids. And uh, so we have to not to be shy and to be passive. We have to actively participate in local politics and voice ourselves. Are there any like specific examples that, of you like involving the Asian community in your work to advocate for these issues? Yes, when I um, when I saw um, critical race theory is being pushed down to um, schools and and uh, indoctrinate our kids anti America agenda cultural Marxism. I co-founded New Hampshire Aging American Coalition and uh, with another Vietnamese immigrant who has been here for a long time and who knows what I'm talking about. And we organized the rally in state capital called the Stop Critical Race Theory Indoctrination. We talk about what brought us to this country. It's all men are created equal and our natural rights should bond us together and based on individual rights and liberty, not based on skin color. We love what Dr. King said, you know, that uh, we all want to be judged, you know, by the content of our individual character, then, but not by our skin color. So that organization today, three years later, and still going, and we have our website, we have our X account, you know, Facebook, we're not so fact effective, so we're not active there. And uh, I, and, you know, so once in a while we, we, we do events, so we do potlucks and, and uh, we help each other. 
And so there's a lot more to do because I'm running for Congress now. And so some other activities uh, have not been, you know, like organized. And, but I want to go out to reach out to our um, 3% aging Americans in New Hampshire, 4% Hispanics and 2% Blacks. You talk about 9% of minorities in New Hampshire. When I first moved here, people say, why do you want to move to New Hampshire? It's 91% white. I say, so what? You know, I don't focus on people's skin color. I go where maximum freedom is. I love New Hampshire because we have a state model to say live free or die. The death is not worse of the evil. So I embrace the same values they embrace. That's where you need to seek common ground. So when they um, radical left side talk about diversity, they only talk about diversity according to people's race and skin color. But you, they truly don't have a diversity in ideologies, concepts, and ideas and thoughts. If you think differently and you speak differently, they're gonna label you, call you racist and bigots and and the and the anti democracy, you know, white supremacist. <laughs> you they can call even black person that name. You know, they, I'm sure they can call me extremist too because I love freedom. I embrace American ideals. You know, the funny thing, I am on the local uh, uh, formal state Democrat senators uh, anti-democracy extremist list. And uh, because uh, I am a Republican and uh, love freedom and, you know, embrace the American ideals, uh, that tells you something wrong with the Democrat Party. They are the ones who have switched all the way to radical leftists. So if you believe in socialism, Marxism, ideologies, and doing identity politics, oh, oh, they are the right ones, and we're the bad guys. <laughs> that tells you how far this country has has come from. Is is their ideologies and practice actually are dividing our citizens? I'm willing to debate them, sit down with them, and I have conversations, and I do get a lots of local interviews, but. I, I don't think the Democrat groups have invited me and, and, and to go to talk to them at all. I just been put on this uh, anti-democracy extremist list. <laughs> and so have you tried to like reach out to Democrats and like talk to them, like you've said, or is it like unsuccessful because they're unwilling to talk to you? Well, I have offered to speak for free in our schools and in our libraries and uh, in our churches and, and just tell my stories, nonpartisan, growing up in communist China. And, uh, but I only did five libraries so far, one school and uh, one charity organizations and, uh, and, and one church. So I, but I'm still trying to lock on the doors. I, I did also um, founded a women's social club called the uh, um, Wear Pink. Wear is the town I live. And Wear Pink, that means for ladies come and join us. Anybody can join, include Democrats. I, we don't ask people's party affiliations. I think that the people who have common sense, they like me. And uh, But when, when it comes to politics, though, I have not got invited to go to the left organizations. I did... Uh, um, like one time did a, um, like a, an RSVP trying to go to a, a, a leftist group. And I think it was like a Black Lives Matter or something like that. And I said, oh, I want to hear what they have to say. I'm open-minded to listen to them. They did not even let me to join their Zoom call meeting. They did they recognize me. I'm not uh, their kind. <laughs> so they want me to be quiet. And most recently, I did go to watch a gun debate, gun control debate at Dartmouth College campus. And my friend was debating, you know, David Hawk, you know, the, the, the gun control activist and uh, a young man. And, uh, and I asked him one question under one minute. I destroyed the gun control narrative. Said, hey, David, can you guarantee me our government will never, never become tyrannical government? He gave me honest answer. He said, no, I cannot guarantee that. And I said, well, then the gun control debate is over. It's over. I will never, never give up my guns. And that video has gone viral. Millions of people say that. And, and so, so that's great because I told my story as Chinese immigrant. Millions, millions of people died under tyranny. And if you cannot guarantee U.S. government will never become tyrannical government, then why do we have gun control debate? We can talk about policies. We can talk about how to 
reduce mass shootings and protect the citizens and students and, and teachers. And, but it's not about gun control anymore. It's about the solve problems of our society, mental health issues and the moral family decline and breaking up and the crime rampant. You see how many blue cities, blue states, criminals are being empowered by our bad policies in those cities and states and regular citizens are being marginalized. And you look at the open border policies, all the illegal aliens come here, commit a crime because they sexual cities, they cannot be deported. And they're trying to change your words now. You cannot call those people per, per the federal government, illegal aliens, illegal immigrants. So they're trying to erase the difference between legal and illegal, say censor words, change the definition of the a word is a typical communist tactic. So they are constantly changing, redefining words and definitions in order to achieve their agenda and to validate their political narrative and for power grab. You know, the, why do they open up borders? Let so many people, 10 million people come in. We don't know who they are, where they go to, and offer them incentives to come in. Where legal immigrants are waiting for 10 years. My brother waited for 13 years to come to this country with me be sponsor. That means for the first five years, he were not getting any government welfare help. So how come they don't let those people come in very fast and, and take the jobs and contribute to economy? Because the Democrats want the illegals come in and uh, vote for them, turn into one party, you know, country. And a lot of people should wake up to that. And, and especially the, the common sense Democrats should say, this is not right. We want the legal immigrants, not the illegals, not on the back of taxpayers, give them incentive to come in. And then criminals are just, you know, running our, our streets now. It's terrible. And, and uh, so I hope, you know, people live out there in those cities and, and, and worry about your safety. Yeah. And just to expand on that a little bit, what is your vision of American society and how do you, th what, what will you do to kind of fulfill that vision? Well, the thing is, so I think America is an exceptional country on earth because of founding fathers, exceptional documents. We are a constitutional republic and people have individual rights and liberty and cannot be infringed by the, um, you know, majorities of votes. You know, we are representative democracy. So that's why people get involved in the local government and to vote for their representatives. But uh, America who has a $35 trillion debt and deficit out of control spending and the uh, um, centralized government, centralized education, indoctrinate our children not to be very Americans anymore, basically. And especially the one they're pushing into our school today, it, it transgender them, climate change, social justice warriors, and, and the gun control. And, and, and now you're talking about college campuses, you know, anti-America, use the issue of, you know, anti-Israel and uh, um, pro-Gaza. And, but you say all these similar people are behind this uh, almost like similar cultural revolution I saw in China to destroy American culture, heritage, ideals. And uh, so if we want to back to our American identity, American ideals as a country, we need to focus on getting our people uh, united. So that means a silent majority. If you are awake, if you know what's going on, you need to get involved and speak up, do whatever you can at your local level. Just running for school board, support your school board members. It's huge in my state, in local towns, because school board members mostly are leaning left right now, even in a very Republican town I live in. And uh, so, but also at the federal level, we need to go back to the basics of fiscal responsibility. The people's American dream is hurting. Young people like you feel like they cannot afford to rent, to buy because of high inflation, high interest rate, high mortgage rate. And uh, um, they, you know, there's a, you know, supply is not enough to meet a high demand for housing. And the government over-regulation 
and the local zoning laws, and the 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 Wall Street buying up single family homes, all are affecting you know that our kids an American dream. I wonder why there some of them are very depressed and confused and and have no meaning in life. I have lots of young people volunteer for my campaign because they relate to my messages and they're inspired. So what I want to do when I get elected, I want to stop this out of control deficit spending, stop borrowing money, printing money, drive up inflation, and our people are suffering to pay for high cost of everything from food to energy, heating oil, and to, to medicine, healthcare, everything is going up. But at the same time, they're still continue to not prioritize and our spendings and continue to borrow and printing money. And of course, border need to be secured and free speech need to be absolutely protected. And the government should get out of speech business. It's, you know, let the people to disagree, agree with each other, have open conversations and open debate and get out of centralized education and get back to local control, parental control, and uh, um, get our citizens basically to you know, have this middle class and small business all strive again instead of people are all worried about their future. And we have seen enough of the you know, kind of also turning tyranny in the past a few years. And uh, um, so I would like to see America go back to its basics and fundamental um, that the uh, American ideals that I you know, admire I came here for. Okay, thank you for sharing your message. I think we're going to end the interview there. Thank you for having me. And please go check out my website, LadyTomWilliams.com.